All right, on this question, write a linear equation to represent the function that passes through these two points, 3 comma 180 and 4 comma 360. Remember, we're aiming for y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So let's start by finding our slope. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is a skill we've done before. Let's label those points. This is going to be x1, and that's y1. That's x2 and y2. Let's put them into our formula. y2 is 360 minus y1. So negative from the number is positive. In this day, minus 180. x2 is 4 minus x1, which is 3. 360 minus 180 is 180. 4 minus 3 equals 1. Slope equals 180. Next step, pick a point and then put them into the equation. Doesn't matter which point you pick. I'm going to pick that one. Y minus, now instead of Y1, oh sorry, instead of a positive 180, I have to flip the sign. I'm going to go minus 180 equals my slope, which is 180 again. My x, which has to be there, minus x1, and x1 is 3, so it's going to be minus 3. There's my equation in point-slope form. One more time. Let's make a, write a linear equation to represent the function that passes through 100, 212, and 0, 32. Let's label these points. Now, I'm actually going to flip it. I'm going to make this one my x1, y1, and this one will be my x2 y2. It doesn't matter which is which. And as we set it up, you'll see why I'm doing it this way. Starting with our slope. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So my slope, my y2 is 212 minus my y1, which is 32. My x2, which is 100, minus my x1, which is 0. Now you can start seeing why I switched them around. If I'd used the other point as x2, uh, if I'd flipped them around, I'd end up with small numbers taking away big numbers, and I'd end up having to work with a lot more negatives. It all works out in the end, but I just find this easier to look at and see. All right, so 212 minus 32 should give me 180. 100 minus 0 gives me 100. Let's simplify that. Divide both by 10. m equals 18 over 10. I can go further. Let's divide those by 2. m equals 9 over 5. Okay, I can't go any further than that. There's my slope. All right, I'm still aiming for y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. At this point, it doesn't matter which point you go with. I'm just going to go with this one again, it's smaller numbers. I think it's easier, a little easier to deal with. Y minus Y1 in this case is going to be 32 equals, and my slope is 9 over 5 times X, and X1 happens to be 0. Leave it like that, you're completely right. I prefer to take that minus 0 out, it just clutters things up a bit. Y minus 32. It was 9 over 5x. There is my equation. Let's continue manipulating our point-slope form. And here's a case where the point-slope form works well again. Let's write an equation for a line that passes through the point uh, 1 and negative 1, and it's parallel to a specific line. And then part B asks for one that is perpendicular to a specific line. Both cases still going through that point. Before we even get started, we need to look at this original line, and it's the same in both cases. And we need to know what is the slope of that line. Remember, to the previous section, parallel and perpendicular, the slopes matter. That's what makes them parallel or perpendicular. Slope of this line, and it appears to be written in slope-intercept form. It's this piece in front of the x, that is my slope. So in both cases, we're looking at a slope to be two-thirds. I'll call that line one. Two different points. We'll start with the parallel line. Remember, when we're looking at parallel lines, m1 and 
slope of the second line are exactly the same. The only part that's different is the point that it goes through, which means it's going to have a different y-intercept. So this piece is completely useless to us. We're going to use point slope form because it makes more sense in this case. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So all we need to be able to do this point, so all we need to be able to work with this formula is a slope and a point. Well, guess what we've got? Slope and a point. Let's put it in. Y. Now, instead of Y1, I'm going to put whatever Y1 is. It's a minus 1. I have to go to the opposite sign. So it's going to be Y plus 1 equals, instead of the M, I'm going to put my 2 thirds. Because remember, slope of a parallel line is going to be exactly the same slope as the other one. And instead of X1, I'm going to put whatever my X value is and the opposite sign. So it's going to be minus 1. There's my equation of the parallel line. Let's move on to the perpendicular line. This one was a little trickier. Remember, if our slope is the negative reciprocals of each other, whatever the first slope is, you flip it and take the opposite sign. If m1 equals 2 thirds, then m2, I'm going to flip it, becomes 3 over 2. And the opposite sign. It was a negative, it now becomes, or sorry, it was a positive and it now becomes a negative. So just like before, I now have a slope and a point. Put it into the equation. Y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. That y stays the same. My y1 is going to be negative 1, so I take the opposite sign of that, which is plus 1 equals. Instead of the m, I'm going to put in whatever my slope of my second line is, minus 3 over 2. x still stays in there, and x1 is the opposite sign, whatever my x1 is, minus 1. There is the equation of the perpendicular line. Let's do that one more time. We've got a point, uh, 2 and negative 3. That's where we want the new lines to go through. And here's the equation of the old line. So if I want to go parallel to that line, now, before I even get there, let's find our slope. That's this piece right here. So slope equals 3. When I do A, my parallel lines, I'm going to remember my slope will be exactly the same as the slope of the original line. So it's going to be, my slope's going to be 3. Y minus Y1 equals X times X minus X1. Y stays the same. My Y1 in, the, in the, my point right here is negative 3, so I'm going to go to the opposite sign y plus 3 equals, sorry, that should be an m right there. My slope is 3 times x minus x1. And in this case, x1 is 2. So take the opposite sign of that, minus 2. There is the equation of the parallel line. I go up here and do b, perpendicular. Remember, the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So if m1 equals 3, just for good note, measure, I'll put it 3 over 1, so it's easier to see this next part. M2, I'm going to flip that, becomes 1 over 3, and has to be the opposite sign. Right out our equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Put our pieces in, y, my y1 is negative 3, opposite sign is plus 3, equals, instead of m, I'm going to put in my new slope right there, negative one third x, and my x1 is 2, opposite sign of that is minus 2. There is my perpendicular line.